Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, crafty goblins faced the truth about the darkness in the big wooden house. It had come for the wise princess, driving her mad and causing her to attack them. When they started asking questions about the princess in the darkness, the goblins realized that no one else in the forest wanted to know the truth. So they dug and searched and asked hurtful questions, learning more about the wise princess than they had ever hoped to. But the search took its toll. The darkness was proving too much for Sister Goblin, and yet Brother Goblin kept diving deeper and deeper until Sister Goblin finally said, enough. And that was how the goblins found themselves separated again, hurt and confused, with so many unanswered questions and too many open wounds. Hey everybody, it's Wellens and welcome back to Tell Me Why Chapter 3. Wait, ashes? Again? Oh. Oh my god. go forward and find a new place for herself in this world, where she was no longer truly a princess and a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a wan woman alone in a deep and ancient wood. Oh. You killed me. <laughs> you killed me. Oh, poor Allison. I can't even imagine what kind of feelings she has about the whole thing. Apparently their mom didn't treat them that nicely, but she was still their mom. But then she killed her in defense of her brother. But she still loves her. But she still remembers the good times they had with their mom and ugh, 
the child services, and there's so many different things tugging at her here. Oh, I thought for the past few days they were staying at the old house. But no, she's still living with Eddie. Can we talk about the acceptance letter, Eddie? Where is Tyler staying then? Oh, maybe they were planning on staying at that house together, but now that they had a bit of an um, argument, Allison decided to come back. Morning. I started collecting the documents you need for your rental application. Left the file for you downstairs on the kitchen counter. If you're still coming to meet Dee for lunch, you can drop off the documents and I'll make some copies for you. Take it easy today, Uncle Eddie. P.S. My famous fuck up beak wheat waffles are slowly growing cold in the kitchen. Hmm. He's really attentive. He does care about me. But now would probably be a good time to talk about the acceptance letter, right? I don't think we would have told him what happened last night, so he just knows that I came back and I'm in a really bad mood. <sighs> He's right. Time to get my shit together. Yeah. <sighs> Never could bring myself to send these. Whenever I tried to tell him how much I missed him, it felt... unfair. Because you're free and he's not? Hi, Tyler. I know we haven't talked by phone in a while, and I think that's mostly my fault, so I'm sorry. I've just been so wrapped up in my own problems, sometimes I forget you aren't that far away. Senior year has been the worst ever. I dated this guy for a few months, Bobby, hopefully you don't remember him, only to realize he was a total jerk who didn't give a shit about me. I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out, or why I let it take over my entire school year. I honestly feel so stupid. But I also feel stupid for feeling stupid, ha ha! Anyway, I think what I'm trying to say is, life sucks without you. I miss you. I miss your presence, and I miss talking in our voice. Do you want to come to my graduation party next Friday? Nothing amazing. We'll just have dinner with Uncle Eddie and some neighbors. Tessa might swing by. I'd really love it if you were there. This is... senior year? So not that long ago, maybe uh, two or three years ago? which is when Tyler would have already been able to visit. I realize now I could just call and invite you. I don't know why I'm writing a letter, but maybe with all the time apart, I've forgotten how to communicate with you. I'm sorry. I hope we can get back to where we were someday soon. Love, Allison. Oh, so she never sent these. But she also never made the calls. So they just kind of didn't talk to each other for a while. Except for the once in a blue moon when Allison drums up the courage to be like, Hey Tyler, can you... can I come visit you? But then Tyler says no. Oh, these two poor kids. I 
I could do my laundry. Ugh. Maybe later. Why do you have toilet paper just lying on the shelf like that? It's weirding me out. Whoa, you even have like a nice, uh, what you call it? The window in the, the sky. <laughs> Good to know I look just as bad as I feel. Maybe you should wash up. Feel a little bit better? <sighs> There's not enough concealer in the world to erase the night I had. Do you want to go talk to Tyler? Maybe not yet. I could do my laundry. Or not. Ugh. Maybe later. I'm guessing you don't want to take a shower either. My work shirt. Wish I could just book a one-way ticket to the other side of the world. It's much easier to run away. You don't have to think about anything. Just keep running. But, like Tyler says, we'll never be able to fully resolve these feelings if we don't try to resolve them. How did we go from being so alike to, to total opposites? <sighs> I gotta think about something else. Do you want your siblings to be close to you or opposite? Maybe it depends on the kind of person you are, too. But then twins, though, it's not a regular sibling relationship. People often say that twins are basically, like, bonded. And they are bonded. They have a voice. Now would be a good time to stop smoking and maybe do a detox or 12. Oh, I'm a little bit surprised that Allison smokes. And back at the police station, we could use smoking as an excuse for Tyler, too, so... Do they both smoke? Then it's a little bit surprising that during all these stressful times, nobody pulled out a cigarette. <laughs> mm. But a lot of kids play these games, right? So maybe they don't want to... I don't know. Okay. Check the documents Eddie left for you in the kitchen. Okay. Hey, now that we know our father is somebody from Delos Crossing, it might actually be possible that we're part Klingit. I gotta take care of that rental application. I miss the slopes. Eddie looks so young here. It's kind of messed up that she was basically raised like an only child. The days have gotten so short. It's gonna be a long winter. Hmm. Yeah, that's what it's like here on the west. Wow, this house is actually pretty big. And you get your own space. And your space is pretty big too. This entire upstairs area, right? And then maybe that's Eddie's room. What the? Oh my god. I should probably eat something. God, I feel so weak. Whoa, the memories are like randomly seeping out. Oh. Eddie looked pretty concerned when I came home last night. I should have talked to him about what happened, but what the hell was I supposed to say? No, it seems like Eddie's room is here. And yeah, she didn't tell Eddie anything. I'm glad he never pushed me to change my last name. Court document? For the protective proceeding of Allison Ronan. The miner was here, miner's attorney, petitioner, Mr. Edward Anthony Brown. The court finds that... No, the miner is not a native child. Hmm. Parental rights?
The minor is not married, and all parental rights of custody have been terminated or suspended by circumstances or prior court orders as follows. Deceased alone parent. Father unknown. Estranged family members. We might have family outside of Dell's Crossing somewhere, but that would be pretty hard for us to figure out. Anyway, Eddie adopted me. He's not... I don't get the sense that he wants to claim me for himself or anything, because just like Allison says here, he never pushed her to um, change her last name, and he really... Mm, I think he really loves Allison. And even not letting her see Tyler was something he did out of love, but was that the correct thing? Or even without even thinking about whether it's the right thing or not, is that what Allison would have wanted? Does she get a choice in this? Still can't believe Eddie never told me he was paying for fireweed. Oh, even Allison didn't know about it. That's a big thing too. So he was really doing that out of the kindness of his heart then, because he really didn't have to do it. He didn't do it to be like, Hey Allison, I'm paying for your brother. I'm a really good person. He just did it quietly. Second chance program. It's just that he made, he made the decision that keeping the twins separate, but separately supporting them, was the best decision at the time. was a good memory, even though Tyler couldn't come. Did she end up inviting him in the end? And did he decline? I think we might have talked about that before. Stuff he likes. Eddie must have been back and forth to Juno all the time to these shows before he got stuck here taking care of me. That's a good point too. He didn't have to adopt either of us, but he did, and now he has a child that he has to be responsible for, even though he really didn't have to be. This is personal. Which means we're gonna read it, right? My dearest son, I know I'm not getting better this time, so I wanted to write a few things down for you. I'm sorry to be leaving you so soon. I had you late in my life, but I still thought there would be more time. It makes me happy to know you will have the clan when I'm gone, and you will have your auntie to look after you. You have always seemed to know when it was time to leave. From the time you were a year old, you knew which shoes belonged on which feet, and you used to bring me mine whenever I was getting ready to go somewhere. I could never figure out how you knew I was ready to leave, but there you'd be with my shoes every time. You never cried or made a fuss, just helped me on my way. I hope this leaving will just be as easy, and though I won't need you to fetch my shoes for me, I know you'll help me on my way. Your strength has always been to accept what is and to do what needs to be done. I am so proud of you for joining the police force. People are going to look to you as a leader now, and I know you won't let them down. Please, help the young people remember our way of life. We have thrived as a people since time before memory because of our cultural values. Don't let them lose that. Also, remember how important it is to attend to everyone, not just the ones who fit in. It is our way to lift each other up. Everyone has something to offer to the community. They may not even see it in themselves, so you've got to show them. Help them along their path, as you've always done. Remember, when you uplift others, it makes you stronger too. Hmm. Uh, does anybody know what that says there, the last line? Mom. Eddie sounds like he grew up as um, a leader. That's just sort of in his personality. And he wants to um, take care of people. Which is why he's taking care of Allison now, and even Tyler too. Although not in the same way, and probably not even in the Come optimal on. way. Paperwork. If he knew that 10 years later, Tyler would resent him this much for not letting Allison visit, maybe he would have done something different, but he couldn't have known. Especially because 10 years ago, Eddie was what? In his 20s? I don't think he's that old. A secret keeper in her secret keep. Oh, you're joking me. You're joking me. Why would you have this? Wait. Why would Eddie have this? Maybe there's something in the Book of Goblins that'll help me figure this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 130. 130. I got you. Oh. The story about how the moose told the secret keeper a secret. How the goblins got their voice. 
No? Maybe there's something in the Book of Goblins that'll help me figure this out. Well, there's the eye icon again. Isn't it the Secret Keeper? I can go through until you say something to me. Man, they really put a lot of effort into this. Um, okay, like, I don't... You're not even giving me a chance to open it, though. Like, even if I know it's 130, you're not letting me open this. Looks like this is coin-operated. Oh, okay, so maybe I don't have it yet? Is that what you mean? I don't have the coin yet. Maybe I'll look around. I don't remember picking up a coin. Haven't heard him play in a while. It just sits there, collecting dust. Eddie made a lot of sacrifices to take care of us, too. Leaving behind his old lifestyle, giving up hobbies and free time. Hmm. I don't think I know any Claire's in Delos Crossing, but I shouldn't be snooping in here. Should I write that down? Isn't that Eddie's mom? Okay, I will write that down just in case. Oh. <laughs> I shouldn't be snooping around, so I'm gonna pick up that paper I found there and put it somewhere else. <laughs> okay. God, he better buy something new if he's actually got plans with this mysterious Claire person. Oh, is he trying to meet someone new? But I thought his mom's name was Claire. Did I misremember? This whole time, he's been trying to take care of me. Not having time for hobbies. Not having time to be with somebody, too. And it's really difficult for him because, dating-wise, because he has a daughter already, right? That's the thing that not everyone that's interested in him will want to deal with. What was this again? Oh yeah. Sorry Eddie, just snooping around. And then, I guess... Well, before we look at the documents in the kitchen, we will find a coin, hopefully. Not right. I can't do it. What is this? <laughs> well, seeing those memories is dependent on your bond with Tyler, maybe? Your voice, right? So he's not here right now. Plus, you guys are not only physically separated, but mentally as well. Maybe that's why you can't unlock any of those memories. He doesn't like this kind of attention, but he really does so much for the community. Dear Chief Brown, thank you so much for bringing our children home safe last weekend. Without you, they might have gotten behind the wheel and who knows what could have happened to them or anyone else. We'll always be grateful for your wisdom. Thanks again for taking this off the books. They are good kids who made a mistake and Lord knows how a police record can compromise a child's future. We know they will remember your words for a long time, but please rest assured that we will do whatever we can to make sure they understand the extent of what could have occurred so they can raise awareness among their peers in the community. God bless you, Gail and Toby Locklear, Karen and Brody Moore. Mm, they might have been getting ready to drink and drive. So seeing all these things, I think it makes it abundantly clear why Allison sees Eddie so favorably, in addition to how he's basically been taking care of her the whole time. But Tyler doesn't know any of these, right? So at the same time, I can see why Tyler would be like, I gotta take care of that rental application. Not lenient with Eddie. <sighs> so many months of snow boots ahead. And this guy's not really that much of a show off. He likes to quietly do things for people. Which is good. He's a good person. But it also means that sometimes people you help don't even realize that you're doing that. I need to get all that paperwork together. Maybe that'll help me focus and clear my head. 
and so they don't have the proper grateful attitude that they would have if they knew that you did all these things for them. I wish Eddie's mom could have taught me how to do this. What is it? You mean make this? I wish Eddie's mom could have taught me how to do this. I can't really eat anything right now. The waffles. There's the documents. He probably left for work already. I wish you could just change your mood as easily as a record. So don't touch the documents. Eddie says there's a plant for every pain, except heartache. Ah. <sighs> It's a very wooden feeling house. I like it. I so don't want to go back to the station. Not after yesterday. Mmm, we made a big scene at the station. Yeah, so Eddie must be thinking like, oh my god, we had that big thing at the station and yet Allison came back home last night anyway. So something must have happened between her and Tyler. Uh, I so don't want to go back to the station. Not after yesterday. Must be great to feel like you belong somewhere. Anywhere. Hmm, Allison. It might be easy to feel like a fraud. To feel like I should be the one in fireweed. I'm not the one who should be getting to wander around outside and going to school and having senior prom. And dating people at school. Yeah! Take all of them. What if I just packed a bag and left? And never looked back. I almost wish the house had burned down last night. Then I'd never have to see it again. Your dreams are our business. <laughs> Your dreams are our business. They think it's a really cool logo, but all that tells me is that you guys are cutthroat and it doesn't matter what you want because we want to make money. <laughs> Realtors. Wait, 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 wait. Was that my driver's license? North to the future. Allison is 5'7". How tall is that? Way taller than me, but I just want to know. I don't know these inches and whatever feet stuff. What is it in meters and centimeters? One seventy centimeters? Whoa, she's pretty tall. Oh, that's our address. AK-77477. Our postal code. Mm. Eddie loved his Mishka so much. But he's gone now. God, the world feels so fucking small right now. I've got to find a way to get out of my head. Hey, you've been to Seattle before? Have you ever gone to the art exhibition there? This is the... The Space Needle. Any butterflies on the side of the fireplace? No? I haven't had any time to sketch lately. Is it time? Or motivation and interest. When you're stressed out, I imagine you don't really want to do anything. I wonder what Tyler's up to out of the house. We didn't really have an argument, right? It was more like, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. And uh, let's just call it a day for today. I don't want to be at the house anymore. I 
wish I thought shooting some hoops would help me forget all this. I wonder what Michael would think about all this. Would he even get it? Oh, we went to high school together. Of course, though, it's a small town. I don't feel like listening to anything right now. You better not. I don't want copyright issues. <laughs> Whoa, look at that gigantic stain. It's awful. It's on carpet, too. So hard to get out. Anything by the TV? Nope. I wish you could just change your mood as easily as a record. I'm not gonna touch it, don't worry. Michael's Special Creamy Crab Hot Pot. Sauté grated onion and garlic and melted butter over low to medium heat. Add celery and carrot and wait until they're soft. Add potatoes, vegetable broth, and seasoning to taste celery salt, black pepper, paprika, crushed red pepper flakes. Cover and simmer until potatoes are cooked. Yada yada yada. Enjoy! Master Chef in the making. Maybe if I make something for Dee, it'll help calm me down. Don't forget her birthday gift. December Community Potluck for Delos Crossing Elders. I should have let myself enjoy these trips more. I'm looking at that Vancouver magnet and I have no idea where that is. <laughs> where is that view from? Anchorage? Another place in Alaska? Denali? Okay, let's go open some secrets. Isn't it weird though? Why does Eddie have a box with a secret keeper symbol on it? Did he get it from my mom? A secret keeper in her secret keep. The moose told the secret keeper a secret, and then he felt free after he let it out. No way. It worked. Wait, so you don't need a code at all. I wonder what we needed the Book of Goblins for. To learn that we needed a coin? I don't even know where it said that. <laughs> cool. Sorry, Eddie. That's mine now. Cool little contraption, though, but, uh... <laughs> we're just gonna steal the stuff. Because that's how we are. The secret keeper is a traveling woman who buys and sells secrets. She stores all these secrets in the clouds because nobody ever looks up when they're searching for hidden things. She looks so happy and stuff, but when I read the story, I got the impression that she was spooky and mysterious. And she's the one who granted the goblins their voice. I always loved this one. The Klingit style paintings are really similar to an indigenous culture in BC called Haida. Like, I remember in elementary school, we had to study paintings that looked a lot like this one. Hmm. Here's the file. Just need my ID and pay stubs. Okay. We were family, Allison. How could you do this to me? Ooh. <sighs> Fuck. I've got to think about something else. Focus. ID and pay stops. Yeah, now we have to deal with it because we're so agitated. It's just coming out. Tenant info sheet. Ronanallison at dmail.com. Yeah. She's getting ready to rent. Employment verification. To whom it may concern. In regard to her current rental application, I can confirm that Ms. A Mrs. Allison Ronan 
Mrs. has been employed at Veni Vedi Vecchi since June 2013 and is still currently working here as an accounting assistant. Where she does data entry, processing and record transactions, bookkeeping, preparing budgets and reports. She's working full time and earns a yearly salary of $24,000 plus bonuses. Plus bonuses? Bonuses for working as an accounting assistant? Okay. Yeah, basically just telling the, the landlord that, hey, this person has an actual job. They can pay the rent. I got pretty lucky with this job. Tessa and Tom really took a chance on me. Well, being the chief's daughter probably helps, whether you like it or not. Hey. Uh, ID? Where do we see pay stubs? Ah, here's my ID. <sighs> this place was never much more than a bachelor pad, huh? <laughs> there was so much I planned to do. All those sacrifices I made. And how do you repay me? Lying to my face? And you're not my child. My clan deserves better. Oh, stop it, Allison. You have to stop torturing yourself. Just grab your pay stubs so you can get the hell out of here. She understands it's not true. Yeah, we understand logically that Eddie would never say that. These are things that we understand he has done for us. And he understands that we understand that. But he would never say it in those words. Hey, where did we have pay stops? I don't even remember seeing that. Did I miss it somewhere? Is that the only thing I'm missing? All my recent pay stubs should be in that folder in my room. Okay. Take it easy, Allison. I can't leave without all my application stuff. Okay. I told him I wanted to stop messing with those memories, but he wouldn't listen. No, it's not messing. <laughs> Brother, sister, we look out for each other. That's what you said. But you don't mean what you say, do you? They're just words. You left me, Allison, all alone and scared. <laughs> wrong with me oh my god I feel like Allison's got to go see somebody about this it's here right not here Allison says I told you we shouldn't have messed with those memories it's very negative. Like, if we didn't go look into this, then this wouldn't be happening. But it's not like that, right? Because this was always sitting in the back of your mind, in the bottom of your heart. Unresolved. Sooner or later, even if not right now, somewhere, it's gonna surface up again. You can't run from this forever. Not here. There you go. Hmm. Damn. Eleven fifty an hour. Twenty fifteen. 11.50 US dollars. Is that pretty good? 
I feel like it is. 2015, US dollars, 1150? Here they are. Okay, I think I've got everything I need for the application. Where's that coming from? Where did I leave my phone last night? You have an odd ringtone. That one felt not nightmare -y. Hey. No, no, no. I cannot deal with you right now. Yeah, your phone is here. Even though the ringing is obviously coming from over there. Why is your phone in the workshop? No phone here. Oh, it's over there. What's it doing here? Oh, was Eddie reading it? I hope not. Hey, D. Finally! I was starting to get worried. Why didn't you pick up? Yeah, uh, sorry. I, uh... I didn't have my phone on me. Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure we were still on for lunch. Uh, yeah, of course. I'm getting ready right now. That so? Because it kind of sounds like I woke you up. That's just how I sound. But anyways, I still have a few things to do before I can leave, but I'll be there. All right, hon. See you soon. <sighs> get it together, Allison. Come on. Grab the file, get dressed, and head out. Or, it'd be nice to make a gift for Dee. God, my hands are still shaking. I was just gonna say, you wrote a sticky note. Don't forget the gift. I was not in the right headspace to make something last night. I should try it again. Ah, that's why we were down here. You're gonna make it now? Can you? How long does this take? I miss you, pup. Oh, Mishka. I've got enough time to carve something for D. Are you serious? Wow, does it take that short of time? You should have taken care of yourself first, Marianne. We deserved that. I don't remember any of this. I'd be surprised if you did. Look at how small you were. Is that Marianne? It's not even how I remember her. Eddie can't cope with getting rid of any of Carol's stuff. Oh yeah, Eddie's mom was Carol, not Claire. I've been pretty grinchy about Christmas since I came here. <laughs> Eddie tries so hard. Basically, the basement is where we put the stuff we want to keep, but we don't want to see on a regular basis. Tyler and I should bike around the lake when we've patched things up. The house or your relationship? Fishing! Eddie's been too busy to fish lately. I know he's missing it. 
You know they're serious. They've got a rack here. Eddie's been too busy to fish lately. I know he's missing it. Oh, fishing license? Tips of tails must be removed and salmon harvest must be recorded prior to leaving fishing site or concealing fish from view. Edward Brown, Allison Ronan. 25 salmon and each additional member allowed 10, so we can have 35. 35? That's a lot. How long is the season? A few months? Will we even eat that many fish? Do we eat all the fish we catch? Everybody fishes here. Okay. Right now? You're starting from scratch and you're gonna make like a wolf head right now? How long? Oh my god. A few hours? I'm guessing it's earlier in the morning right now. I thought it was more like 10 minutes before we had to go. Not a wolf, but a... Oh, the huskies! Because D is obsessed with the, the husky races. Nice. Damn, man, that took 20 seconds. <laughs> hey, keep your mind off things, Allison. What? Morning! Hey, Allie. Hey. Hey, guys. What are you doing here? Tessa and I were worried after you called in sick last night. She's busy at the cafe, but she sent over some coconut cake, since you won't be making it in for lunch. That's nice, Tom. Thanks. I'm gonna head on inside. Freezing my butt off out here. Bye, Tom. Okay, uh, thanks. Is Tyler not around today? No. He's, uh, busy. Out at the old house. I see. It must be hard to sell the place you grew up in. So many memories, right? Oh, it's okay. We'll get over it. I really hope so. So, Tessa told me a little bit about what happened at the cemetery. Yeah, I'm sorry it got so intense. It's just, we really needed to understand why Marianne did what she did. Especially Tyler. Oh, of course, of course. She gets that. You two didn't say anything she wasn't already thinking. She spent years blaming herself. Well, she wasn't the only one involved. There was a lot of blame to go around. I'm glad you're able to see that. It seems like your brother, well, he, he's not nearly so forgiving, is he? He has been pretty harsh. Especially on Eddie. But we both got tired of people lying to us for our own good. Mm. Yes, of course. Uh, totally reasonable. Though, I am sorry you're the one taking all the repercussions. I heard about the fight with your uncle. I really hope your brother appreciates your sacrifices. He will. I, I mean, he does. I'm sorry, but I, I'm pretty beat. Oh, of course. I'll let you rest. Tell Michael there's no need to hurry back. Okay. Thanks for stopping by, Tom. Bye now. Take care. Sorry for abandoning you out there. Pro tip? Avoid catching a ride with Tom at all cost. Did he talk about the new spicy chocolate bars? Yep. And exactly what they do to his digestion. Oh, great. <laughs> mm, there's nothing wrong with him. I don't... He's just like that. Well, 
Well, he said you don't have to rush back to the store. Oh, <laughs> good. Because I did not plan to. <sighs> I've been overdoing it on double shifts this week. I'm beat. I know the feeling. Interesting point about at least the way I've been playing them. Tyler being the harsh hey, one. You've been carving wood again? What? Oh, this. Yeah, I've been working on a gift for Dee. That's dope. Why do you get to be so crafty? I mean, I'm, I'm not that crafty. Marianne taught me most of it. Well, I'm impressed. These hands are good for nothing but cooking. That's a good thing. I'll shelve that conversation for later, because it seems like they want to keep talking here. I don't know about you, but I just really need to get out of Delos Crossing. Well, we're on our way soon, right? Right. I don't know. I, I've just got this feeling it's going to fall through and, and I'm going to be stuck here forever. That's not happening. We've got a plan. Help yourself to some waffles if you want. That's Eddie's way of saying I'm worried about you. Oh, that's cute. But I had a ridiculously huge breakfast, so I'm good. He probably makes better waffles, too. Okay, maybe I can talk about it now. Uh, I just thought it was interesting because it almost feels like Allison... Do you want to talk about what happened with Tessa at the cemetery? No, never mind. I'll talk about it later. <laughs> we just asked her some questions. What kind of questions? Tough ones. Let me guess. She did not appreciate that. She doesn't get to not appreciate it. She reported Marianne to social services. She was trying to get us taken away. Fuck. I'm sorry, Allie. I knew she was nosy, but that's like some supervillain shit. Hey, what's eating at you, Allie? A lot of things. A lot of things. Tyler and I had a fight last night. I was so excited to have him back, but what if 10 years was too much and we're too different? I don't think so. You just need to get to know each other again. Start with the small shit. Figure out what each other's favorite foods are, you know? And then build up to the big stuff. Yeah, that, that makes sense. The last few days have been a lot. And it's totally okay to be overwhelmed. You're gonna figure it all out. Families are fucked up. <laughs> They're basically fuck-up factories. You're right. I just need to relax. <sighs> so, maybe this will cheer you up. I think I found the perfect place. Check it out. It's pretty cool, right? Deposit's a bit high, but it's got two large bedrooms and a view of the channel. Honey, you're really going to give up our home to live in this ugly box? Oh god. Allison? Allison, look at me. Are you okay? I'm just... Um, I need to... I, I just need to sit down. It's okay. I got you. What's going on? Tell him. Tell him. He's your best friend. The point I wanted to make earlier about it being interesting that Tyler was the one that's being harsh is it almost feels like Allison is being a bit of a pushover because she never really dealt with this stuff, right? But Tyler did. Tyler did, and probably at the residential center, he learned a lot about himself, he learned a lot about how to deal with these kind of things. So in that sense, it's like he realizes that, no, I don't have to accept what you're doing just because you think it's for my own good. So I'm not going to forgive you. Whereas Allison might be more like, oh, yeah, what they did was really crappy, but they also did this and that, so I want to forgive them because they intended to be a good person to begin with. Or maybe it's a general difference in personality, too. Yeah, Allison is a tad more reserved, whereas Tyler is much more confident. Anyway, tell him. God, everything? My anxiety's through the roof. I can't eat anything without getting sick, and... and I'm 
have been seeing things. Memories. Of Marianne and me and Tyler when we were kids and Eddie and... It used to just be stuff I'm pretty sure really happened, but... Now I see them everywhere. Shouting every shitty thought I've ever had about myself. I don't know how much more of it I can take. That's intense. I'm sorry, has... Anything like this happened to you before? Right after Marianne died, I had a lot of panic attacks, but nothing exactly like this. Come here, Allie. I hear you. Okay? I hear you. You must think I'm completely nuts. No. I think you went through some really bad shit. You never saw anyone about it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've looked into therapists a few times, but they're all so far away and so expensive. Well, you know what I went through in 2011. I don't know if I'd still be here if I hadn't gotten help. You got that money coming in from the house. For our apartment in Juno. I don't want to bail on you. We're renting, aren't we? Look, I know you hate letting people down, but you gotta put your own oxygen mask on first. I get that. And so does Tyler. Thanks. I'll try. I really need to work on the house today, but Tyler's crashing out there. Not sure if I'm ready to face him. If you want, I could go out there, see how he's feeling and if he's ready to talk. What do you think? Yeah, why not? Why not? Hey, your money from the house. Aren't you renting in Juno? The money you're getting from selling a house should be a lot more than the money that you're using to rent. So, you can still rent, probably still see a therapist, and hopefully, there should still be something left, right? Unless if you're telling me that Delos Crossing is so in the middle of nowhere that that's how cheap the houses are. Yeah, maybe that could work. I hope he'll talk to you, though. He's never been the best at opening up to new people. You sure? Yeah, of course. I don't mind trying if it might patch things up between you two. Oh shit, I'm gonna be late for my lunch with Dee. I still need to change and stuff, but I can drop you off at the store if you want. Sure, thanks. No, Michael, thank you for listening. I mean it. We all need one person to talk to at the very minimum. Can't keep holding everything in. And can't keep running away.